Well, it happened again. A major incident occurred recently which in previous years would have gone atop international headlines. But because we've all been gently boiled like the frog in the proverbial pot, this huge news story passed virtually unnoticed. Except in Italy where it has caused significant distress and alarm. And suffice to say, when it comes to what happened, many such cases. On June 2nd, around 2,000 migrant background youths, predominantly North African, besieged Italian towns around Lake Garda. After travelling from the migrant suburbs of Milan, Brescia and Bergamo, they arrived in Peschiera waving the flags of various African countries, including Morocco, and shouted slogans such as, We came to reconquer Peschiera. This is our territory. Africa must come here. <laughs> They organised the event under the slogan Africa in Peschiera. Note the language here. This isn't just a boisterous beach party. It was a deliberate act of cultural recolonization. Before long, the mob exploded into lawlessness, robbing tourists, brawling with knives and sticks, and ransacking local shops and businesses. They destroyed everything, said a business owner speaking with Corriera della Sera. They broke shop windows, stormed the tourist train, and blocked passers-by on foot or by moped. Hey, 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 hey. riot police who showed up were immediately pelted with stones. Imagine that, you're trying to enjoy a peaceful lakeside vacation. And suddenly there are swarms of migrants fighting running battles with riot cops. <laughs> gonna ruin your holiday, isn't it? As in Cologne and as in Milan this past New Year's Eve, we also saw numerous sexual assaults of women. This in a country where government statistics show migrants are responsible for 42% of all rapes, despite only representing 8% of the population. Ten teenage girls were sexually assaulted on one train alone, and six other girls also reported being molested. We were surrounded, the heat was suffocating, and some of us fainted, said one of the victims. The groups of migrant men groping and molesting the girls told them directly, quote, white girls don't come here. The mayor of Peschiera, Orieta Gaiuli, said, quote, they are just a race of criminals who have left a deep wound in my community. We lived a day of war. What's noteworthy about this havoc is that it occurred not in a segregated banlieue or a migrant suburb, but amidst the picturesque beauty of an upmarket tourist destination. Maybe some wealthy elitists got to experience diversity being a strength up front for the very first time. <laughs> As Matteo Salvini emphasised, these so-called baby gangs, migrant youths aged 16 to 20, are allowed to run riot in Italy because the age at which criminal responsibility applies isn't low enough. Salvini shared messages showing migrants planning a repeat performance with preparations for more rampant criminality circulating on TikTok. Peschiara Delgado was just a warm-up round, said one post. See you in Riccione. Let's call it the summer of cultural enrichment. <laughs> Turns out that this reconquest of Peschiera is an annual event and it's been growing every year. First 200, then 500, now 2,000 involved and every year the unrest gets more violent. What's even more alarming is that many of these baby gang teens with migrant parents will have been born in Italy. Yeah, these are the supposedly well integrated ones. Terrore qui al pomeriggio con questi ragazzini. I ragazzini sono spavaldi, sono ben consapevoli del fatto di essere minorenni e intoccabili. Luca Zaia, the governor of the Veneto region, reacted to the turmoil by asserting, quote, the idea must not pass that events like these can become ordinary, or even worse, that we can become accustomed to it. And yet events like this have become totally commonplace in many European countries. But not others like Hungary and Poland. Wonder why that is. This all happened just days after similar scenes before the Champions League final in Paris, where visiting supporters were terrorised, robbed and assaulted by huge gangs of migrant youths from the Saint-Denis area, which is home to 400,000 illegal immigrants. Again, the vast majority from North Africa and the Middle East. Victims said of their attackers, quote, 
They found our fear amusing. After initially trying to frame Liverpool supporters for the chaos, authorities vowed to conduct a full and proper investigation, but then admitted that they had failed to perform the first basic function of any legal investigation by forgetting to ask for the security camera footage from around the stadium which is all now being conveniently deleted. Whoops. Another Paris suburb was rocked by further unrest last week when gangs of Afghan and Turkish migrants were involved in large inter-ethnic brawls on two separate occasions. If flooding Western countries with economic migrants and refugees is so enriching, and such a net positive, as leftists always claim, why do autocrats like Erdogan and Putin constantly threaten to use migrants as a weapon to destabilize European countries by facilitating their entry en masse to European countries? Are they doing us a favor? Because it doesn't feel like it. For the first time ever, over one million migrants will be eligible to vote in the Swedish national elections. And they ain't voting for populist or right-wing parties like the Sweden Democrats. A recent survey found that more than half of young people want to leave Africa. Their number one destination? Europe. <laughs> You can't import such huge numbers of people from Africa at such an accelerated speed and not expect it to radically change Europe. And the fact that people merely asking to have a frank conversation about what all that entails are being demonised as extremists is an utter disgrace. There's more uproar generated by banners flown over football matches saying British to be a minority by 2066 than there is by hundreds upon hundreds of illegal boat migrants arriving in England every single day than there was after Salman Abedi, a refugee rescued by our own Royal Navy, being allowed to perpetrate the atrocity at the Manchester Arena because police and security guards refused to act on his suspicious behaviour because they feared being called racist. What happened in France and Italy represents a dire warning to the residents of Linton-on-Ouse. That's the tiny English village of just 700 residents that the government planned to dump 1,500 migrants on to be housed at a nearby refugee centre. Despite indicating that they may abandon the plan after locals staged vociferous protests, the government has been secretly planning to go ahead with it all anyway. Recruitment has already begun to staff the site with 400 employees. And according to MP Kevin Hollenrake, facilities are also being moved onto the site. The staff are being told that they must prepare to deal with suicide risks, domestic violence situations, violence and antisocial behaviour and death. Up until now, those things probably weren't a prominent feature of village life in Linton-on-Ouse. 1,500 migrants in a village with just one shop, a few buses that run a day, and 700 residents. What could possibly go wrong? Well, given the examples of what happened in France and Italy recently, they may be about to receive a little more cultural enrichment than they bargained for. <laughs>